Now I know what you're thinking. You read the title and now you see a boring keyboard and you're going, wait, how is this good? But Asus just fixed literally the worst thing about gaming keyboards and I need to test this out. Now you're probably thinking, gee, Hippio, there's a lot of bad things about gaming keyboards. What could possibly be the worst thing? Well, how about the sound? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that speaks for itself. But that's not all. Howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and I'm a certified gamer. So I'm gonna be putting the new Asus keyboard to the test to see if it really is that good. If you're new here, here's an extra howdy hey. I'm Hippio Tech, and I've looked at over 200 keyboards. Yes, even the bad ones. Uh, even the bad ones. I'm also a certified degenerate gamer who's put over a thousand hours into CSGO and many other games. Ow! Because of this, I'm not only just a keyboard enthusiast, I'm a gaming keyboard enthusiast. Now, I've tried keyboards like the Wooting and the other Asus keyboards, but they always leave one thing to be desired. The sound is just not as good as it could be. Now, sure, when you're gaming, you use headphones, but this also affects the feel. Now, here's where I think Asus might have fixed gaming keyboards, and it's a pre-lubed switch that we'll talk about later. But in this video, I'll be checking them out in the form of the ROG Strix Scope 296 wireless gaming keyboard tri-mode connection dampening foam. Dampening foam? Wait, hold on, what? Also, you really don't need to mod this keyboard, but I'm gonna try it just to see what happens, and maybe I'll be surprised. Speaking of surprise, it would be awesome if you surprised the subscribe button because 69% of you haven't and you'll get an extra howdy hey if you do. Howdy hey. That was only for the people that hit subscribe. If you didn't hit subscribe, I swear to God, you better get out of here. Now, before I get into how crazy this keyboard is, thanks, Nola, let me mention that this video is sponsored by Asus. However, with all keyboard sponsorships on this channel, I am not reading from a script. They did not get the chance to review this video and all of my thoughts are entirely my own. If you don't believe me, check out my first video on Asus. I literally trashed their keyboards and they said, yeah, I'll work with that guy again. But really what's respectable to me is that they took my feedback when I trashed their keyboards and they actually listened? That's a new one, um, okay. Now the specific keyboard I'm looking at today is the ROG Strix Scope 296 wireless gaming keyboard, as I mentioned before. It's way too long of a name, just refine that guy. It's basically the Strix Scope 2. It's a keyboard that's releasing on July 3rd for 180 US dollars as a fully built keyboard. This puts it in the range where if it was a custom, it would be kind of budget, but as a gaming pre-built, it's like on the more expensive side. But it does come with some accessories that you saw rolling on the screen that are kind of nice, like a keycap and switch puller. Hey, wait, does that mean this board is going to be hot swap? Okay. Also, please do not screenshot my NFT. I know this joke is old, uh, but I just found out what NFTs are. Don't screenshot it. Also, a feature that some people might really, really like is that it comes with a detachable wrist rest. I like it because it's detachable, meaning you don't need to use it. I'll get into that later. But hey, it's squishy and that's good. Speaking of good, the unboxing experience was pretty good and it came wrapped in this nice little fabric thing. Today was the day Hippio forgot what a bag was. But you know, enough teasing, let's get to the actual keyboard. I, that's what you came here to see. Now, the first thing a lot of you are gonna notice about this keyboard is that it looks kind of funny. Now, if you're new to custom keyboard jargon, I will try and make this video as understandable as possible, but I do also recommend you watch my beginner guide. Trust me, it's a rabbit hole worth going down. You'll have fun. Well, the reason it looks so weird is because it's a 96% keyboard, meaning it keeps the number pad, which is great for some of you. Some of you might really like it. And it just kind of smushes it in there. This actually gives it a really similar layout to a TKL, but it still keeps the number pad, which a lot of people will really enjoy. And check this out. There's a knob. There's a knob, British viewers. It's time to get excited, baby. There's a knob. <clears throat> Anyways. And one thing you'll also notice while looking at this keyboard is that the font is very gamer fonty and definitely not my favorite thing. But what is my favorite thing is how this keyboard handles wireless. I actually talked about this a lot on the ROG Azoth video, so you can go watch that. Asus's wireless is disgustingly fast and probably the only wireless I would actually ever game with. Now, you've also clearly seen the epic RGB gamer time. This board is RGB. I wouldn't expect anything less from a gaming keyboard at this point, honestly. And it's customizable with the ROG Armory Crate software, which honestly, not my favorite software. But that also lets you program macros and things that might be really useful if you play a lot of games. So that's a perk. But at this point, you're probably wondering, Hippio, this still just looks like a normal gaming keyboard. What is special about it? What did they fix? Well, definitely not the back of the case. That's still plastic. 
The board is unapologetically plastic, which actually can be a very good thing for keyboard sounds, and we'll talk about that later. I personally really like it, actually. But what they have fixed is these switches. These are the ROG NX Snows, a linear switch, and you're probably thinking, it's just a normal switch, Hippio. What's special about this? There's a switch in my keyboard. Am I special, Hippio? Am I a little special boy? Well, I'll talk about why they're so amazing later, but let's just say they're factory looped. That they're factory looped. I just told you what makes them so amazing, but <laughs> don't worry. Also, the keyboard is hot swap, which is great, but what's not great is they decided to go with north facing LEDs, which is a mistake a lot of keyboards still make in 2023, the year of our Lord. But the keycaps that they put on the keyboard don't actually cause interference. Speaking of those keycaps, they're fine, actually. They're, they're quite fine. Now, I'm actually not entirely sure if they gave me the PBT or ABS versions of the keycaps, as it says online that they vary between region. But based on the shine, they look like ABS to me, although I could be wrong. Now, these little clips are for the stabilizers, and I absolutely love them. Well and my cat, Nola. Nola, please, no, no, don't push it off. Personally, I think the gamer font is pretty cringe, but it's kind of hard to deny that that RGB shine through spacebar, which is optional, by the way, looks incredibly sick. Speaking of sick, I'm gonna get sick trying to use this wrist rest, but that's entirely personal. Now I'm a rock climber, rock climber hippio, by the way, and I've sprained my wrists multiple times, so typing with a wrist rest is actually really, really unergonomically friendly. It puts way too much strain on your wrist, so it's actually way better to type without the wrist rest and use it for, get this, resting. Also, I was playing around with the space bar and my cat Nola decided that she really wanted it to be her little scratcher. So I just started scratching it on her and she was like, wow, this is literally the best thing I've ever experienced. Can I have more of this, sir, please? So I was like, fine, okay, I'll scratch you with it a little bit. And she started biting it. And I was like, okay, I guess you can bite my keycap, that's fine. So now it's time for the hit new game on the Hippiotech channel. Does this keycap survive Nola bites? And the answer is no. Uh, if Nola does bite your keycap, your keycap will get damaged. So please keep that in mind when buying this keyboard, that Nola bites will damage it. Now, the best part about this keyboard though, is that it sounds and feels really, really good without any mods whatsoever. Here's a sound test. Now, these switches are the first mainstream gaming switch that I've ever felt that actually felt factory lubed, spring and all. Sure, they've claimed it. I mean, even Asus claimed on their last switches on the Azoth that they were factory lubed and they just didn't quite hit the mark. But these are really solid. They remind me of the Wuche series of switches that I absolutely stand super hard because they're such good factory lubing and honestly, no complaint. But here's something I wonder. Will this keyboard solve my anger issues while playing games? Well, it didn't solve Nolas. Stop. Gun. <laughs> nope. And one thing I noticed while using this keyboard is that even though it is not that long, it's still so much longer than what I'm used to, which is the 75%. So I just constantly smashed my mouse into it. So I really hope they just throw these switches in their ROG Azoth or make a 75% version of this. Now you're probably watching this and wondering, Hippio, wait, why did you just take all of the keycaps off? I thought you said you didn't need to mod this keyboard. Well, in every video, even if it's a keyboard I don't think needs to be modded, that doesn't mean you can't mod it, right? And these switches, honestly, not worth lubing. I am not taking them apart. I am not lubing them. They're already pretty decent. And they're also not worth replacing, which is a pretty good feat, because normally I'd just smack in a better factory loop switch in any gaming keyboard. So they fixed that, which is incredible. Now I can hear half of you saying, but wait, Hippia, the Wu-Ting is the best keyboard because it has analog inputs. And I will say, if you play Osu or any game that severely demands rapid trigger, then the Wu-Ting is gonna be a better keyboard for that. But for the vast majority of people, they will not be able to tell the difference or get any of the benefits. So then, what am I gonna do to this keyboard, you're wondering? Well, honestly, I'm wondering how it sounds so good, despite just being a plastic case with an aluminum plate. 
So I've got to take it apart to get to the bottom of this. Taking it apart was actually relatively easy. It's just quite a few screws. And we've got our first signs of what's making it good, which is foam in between the plate and PCB, and a really, really thick layer of silicone that fills the rest of the case. With cheap keyboards, these dampening levels make it so your board doesn't sound hollow and cheap, which is good because you want your board to sound and feel premium, just like you watching this video. Yeah, you're premium. You're so premium. Just like Nola, who's premium and cuddling and being so nice right now. Why is, or why is there so many Nola clips in this video? Because she would not stop bothering me. Sometimes it just happens. Oh. Abandoned. Speaking of things that are happening, uh, I think I should probably say Asus does not endorse doing this to your keyboard, and there's a good chance that what I'm doing right here could break your keyboard, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So because I'm incredibly lazy, I don't feel like taking every switch out, so I just peel the plate away from the PCB. <laughs> Why am I doing this, you might ask? Well, I need a mod to make this keyboard what I think could be better. And, oh, what's this? What is this? Oh, is that press and seal in my garden? <laughs> Now, if you're new to my channel, you see a man wielding press and seal, and you probably think, wow, this is a really unhinged channel. I thought I was just getting into a little tech review, and now he's putting press and seal on his keyboard's PCB, and he's cutting it? Like, what is going on here? Well, this is the Hippio mod, and it's another mod that I actually don't recommend, but I do it all the time. It kind of creates like a little air seal around your keyboard, and it makes it sound a little bit poppier and a little bit deeper, a little bit thawkier, maybe. And that's really nice to me. This could also be replicated by ASUS including PE foam in between the plate and PCB and that little other plate foam. But because that's the one thing they left out in this, I, I did it myself. And because I'm also incredibly unhinged, I just decided, oh, I'm just gonna put it all back together with a little bit of pressure. And uh, there's a good chance this doesn't work. Oh my God, it just worked, what? <laughs> so yeah, don't try any of that at home. Uh, ASUS might be mad at me. Speaking of trying, I tried out a couple of different keycap sets like GMK and they actually weren't as good as these cheaper budget keycaps that I found on Amazon. Some builds really just don't lend themselves to certain keycaps sound-wise. So I picked out these keycaps from Amazon that I'll have linked down below. The Hippio doing the voiceover completely forgot what they are, but they are some type of double shot keycap that I think was around 50 bucks. The Hippio doing the edit will just put it on screen. <laughs> and he's definitely not going to get mad at me just saying this so smug. Haha, <laughs> definitely not mad at all. Nope. If it all burns down, can we burn down together? Now, with a little bit of magic, I'm going to put the keycaps on my keyboard, and oops, my magic malfunctioned. I put the keyboard on my keycaps. So, this is just my idea of what I would do to customize this keyboard to make it look incredibly, incredibly clean. I think this set turned out absolutely incredible, and it took it from just looking like a normal, boring gaming keyboard to something a lot more premium. Now, it could also be said that these taller profile keycaps are a little bit more ergonomic, so there's that going for it too. But there was one unintended side effect. The spacebar ended up sounding pretty hollow. So I did my quick easy fix and I filled it with a little bit of kill mat. This is one of my favorite mods by the way. So now that I've tried the keyboard on its own completely stock and slightly modded, what do I think as Hippio I've tried lots of keyboards tech? Well, for $180, it's a fully built keyboard and that's really decent. The biggest L for this keyboard is the north facing LEDs and the plastic chassis, but the plastic chassis does mean that it's stockier. Now, because of the keyboard's longer profile, for those of you used to like 60% keyboards, it's probably not for you. But if you have a friend that's into gaming and really loves clicky switches, maybe have them try this. The switches just feel so incredibly smooth and sound so nice that I think they'll thank you later. Anyways, here's a sound test. Bye.